Hi, good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on where you are. Um, I'm Rob Skiff, and uh, this is Woodblock uh, 2014. We have um, had some great discussions, both online and off, about uh, higher education, about what a Plano is planning for the future. Uh, and today, right now, what I'm going to do is uh, talk about degree and certificate um, program development. So if you haven't uh, joined us before, um, what we're trying to do is, well, what we're doing is a planner received approval for, um, for course, to offer courses for credit by the state of Vermont. And uh, we've got a bunch of different signposts that we talked about in our last, uh, in, in my last talk. And what we're doing now is talking about how to create degree and certificate programs and what you're going to need to be able to do that if you're a faculty member or a group of faculty members. So I'm going to make sure that yep, everything is ready while I share the screen, which uh, Dan and Daniel have told me that I'm never supposed to do, but I'm allowed to today. Okay. Let me just get into the editing function of this. So uh, yeah, we use Prezi, and we'll be posting all of these uh, presentations uh, to our website and to also the wiki. And uh, um, this is more uh, as I was designing this, I wanted to have a little bit not be quite so serious. So uh, there's going to be a bunch of different. Um, well, let's just get at it. Let's get to it. So creating a degree certificate program is a pretty tricky thing. It is also, though, uh, like giving um, birth to a creation and making it alive. And what we're going to do today in the following presentation is talk about what a plano needs from uh, faculty members uh, for a degree or a certificate program to be created, and also some of our uh, philosophy um, centered around uh, what degrees and, and certificates mean and how they fit into a larger piece of skills development. So the basic concept to remember is that degrees and certificates are collections of classes. And they um, different parts of the world have different definitions of what they mean. Now for uh, a class, a class at a planner is 12 weeks long, 12 continuous weeks, and has three contact hours. Um, per week, and those contact hours are Carnegie units. And Carnegie units, um, when we mean by contact hours, is we're not talking about three hours of lecture. What we're talking about is three hours of um, interaction. And that might mean uh, a lecture in some cases, but in not for three hours, hopefully. Um, but what it might mean is a part is a lecture. Um, but a big part is uh, a discussion and also maybe some group work. So it's really important to remember that during a week you've got to create three hours worth of activities that are interactive. Now a certificate um, for our purposes is a collection of um, generally three or more classes, although we have um, talked about that being four. Now certificates um, can be on any kind of subject and they're kind of discrete areas of study. And if you have an idea of a certificate course, that a certificate that you'd like to create, um, you can either be responsible for creating those three classes, or you can join up with other faculty members to create um, a certificate that is um, three connected classes, which kind of a, a, a theme. Now, earlier today, we had a discussion in Burlington at uh, the Karma Bird House and their conference center there. And we have, uh, Pat was talking about a course um, on restaurant management that she's uh, created. And then we also had um, another faculty member talk about an employment law course for the layman that they were talking about. And so connecting those two classes together. So restaurants need help in terms of their business management and function. But also part of managing a restaurant is dealing with employment law. So that could be two out of the three classes 
that someone w might offer. And a third could be um, a uh, course on um, the, the proper maintenance of the kitchen in terms of uh, different rules, in terms of health codes. And that might be a, a certificate on restaurant management, um, restaurant management in general, restaurant and safety management, food. So again, think of certificates as, as uh, three or more classes, but around some sort of collection, around some kind of uh, common theme. Now degrees are a different um, uh, beast entirely. Okay? Degrees are collections of classes with a common theme or area of study. Um, now we're also going to break down into um, there's undergraduate and graduate degrees but what we want to talk is generally um, a degree is a lot is a much bigger collection of classes and you can get an accounting degree um, all kinds of different things and I think everybody's familiar with that so the thing about certificates is uh, they come in all kinds and there's no one definition just like there's no one definition of a uh, of a superhero or a superhero team you've got the X-Men you've got the Avengers um, and then you have your uh, collections of uh, solo teams that, that move on that's my attempt at humor and it's was a complete dud but we'll move on So degrees are another thing entirely. They're generally earned in succession. You have associate's degrees, BAs, MAs, and PhD, and graduate or undergraduate. Now, I actually picked the picture of Downton Abbey um, deliberately because the picture illustrates really wonderfully um, uh, succession and also um, concepts of uh, class and validity. So for example, what is perceived as being um, the sort of the beginning or the lowest level of, of undergraduate or degree would be in associates. Um, but what we have to really um, keep in mind is the fact that um, an associate's degree uh, for people is a critical piece in terms of helping um, people identify uh, they can be in careers um, specifically like a, an associate's degree in accounting or an associate's degree in you know liberal arts or, or something along the line and what happens is they move um, you move up now one problem is that uh, you have to remember is that we assume that because someone has a particular degree in a um, in a particular subject that they actually have the um, uh, you know that certifies that they have knowledge of um, that area um, for example you know, a, a master's, um, we would, you know, you can shorthand say somebody has mastered the ability or that particular discipline. Um, the PhD or the doctorate degrees generally uh, are centered around research. Um, and if you were to take a look at the number of people who earn degrees at various levels, um, you'll find that, that there are very few people who earn um, the doctorate degrees and the question that you got to ask yourself is, is you know, why that is. So there's undergraduate and graduate degrees, uh, and but what does, what really does that mean when you're talking about a, um, a succession of skills? Okay. So let's talk about undergraduate degrees for a second. So undergraduate degrees, uh, for the purposes of a plano and for the purposes of most certification in the U.S is that an associate's is 20 classes and those 20 classes consist of 60 uh, credits so um, 60 credit hours and you can have a, a, a associates um, again in all kinds of different subjects whether it's from technical or, or bringing people on bringing people getting people started with the liberal arts um, or philosophy etc but generally they're associated with more of the vocational or practical skills um, bachelor's degrees are 40 classes and 120 credits. Okay. Now, at a plano, we're going to we're thinking about having half of the classes, half of the classes for a degree program are general education credits. 
So those are kind of the intro to a particular subject, um, a diversity of classes outside um, your area of specialty. Okay, And one half are sort of discipline credits. So think about when you get a bachelor's, you're not just getting a bachelor's in, let's say, history. You have to, you've, as a bachelor, getting a bachelor's means that you've taken courses in, hopefully, math, science, um, languages, and it's to provide a more general, um, a general level of education. You can have a major in history. It means that generally your focus as you've been going through your bachelor's has been in those, um, uh, in some type of history. Okay? But it's really important to remember that, again, Europe, Latin America, and Asia all have different standards in terms of their recognition of what an associate's and a bachelor's are. You, you know, sometimes there are more credits in one particular area or more classes to get a particular degree. Sometimes they even name their degrees slightly different. But, but a plano is going to um, <coughs> be granting, to start with, it's going to be granting um, undergraduate degrees within the U.S. system. So it will be, you know, associates and bachelors. That's our plan. Of course, we have to get approved by the state of Vermont to... Um, uh, to become a degree granting institution and then after that we're going to be um, going for national and regional accreditation afterwards along with um, accreditation in different in other kinds of um, in other nation states and other types of institutions so we really want to um, upend things in terms of, of how we um, conceive or create um, the uh, different degree programs and how we're asking faculty to design and, and create those particular pieces. So this is, you know, going to be a, you know, now we're the, a more, much more revolutionary type of uh, of arrangement because when you're building a degree certificate program, we're putting that. Um, the emphasis is on faculty. Okay, um, if you're a faculty member at a Plano, or even if you're a student at a Plano, and you have an idea for a certificate or degree program, if you're a student, you need to suggest it to us. Okay, if you're a faculty member, you know, you have different, you have an understanding of your discipline, what's going on. What we'd like you to do is, is, um, you know, you can start off with creating one class can build to a certificate program, but you need to make sure that you first identify the skills that are needed um, to be successful in that area. So again, um, if you were to offer a degree in philosophy, what kind of skills does um, the philosopher need? Okay, What kind of skills, and, and what I mean by that is also content areas. Okay, what sort of, what's the general understanding of what you would need to, to really, to have a good understanding of that discipline? If you're in more of a uh, professional or, or a vocational um, system, you know, think about as the economy and the globe is changing, um, what, what are the skills that people are going to need in the next five to ten years? And just start a list. Okay, start a list and start writing the list of those skills down. You know, you can do all kinds of different research um, to do that. And and once you've listed those particular skills, you've got to really ask yourself as you're creating this degree and certificate program: Is there a market? Are, are there people who are interested in taking um, who would be interested in taking that certificate program? Let's go back to um, the food service piece. Um, Food service is a huge um, industry globally. Uh, there are all kinds of people who have or don't have, um, <coughs> you know, you don't need to have a bachelor's degree in, in, um, to do great work in terms of the food service industry. You have to have the practical skill. But to run your restaurant, to run your um, organization, you might need um, the series of three of three skills like how to think about the balance sheet, the basic accounting, the basic operations. Um, plus, you need to think about the food safety piece. 
then of course, you know, to use that example again, you've got the you've got to have the knowledge of um, you know the the labor laws. Well, globally, is there a market for all three of those types of classes? And there definitely is. So you've got a market there. So you go to the third step: develop a list of courses. Develop a list of courses in succession. Okay, if you're talking about a certificate program or if you're talking about a degree program, you know, come up with a fuller list. But it doesn't have to be sixty. Um, it doesn't have to be sixty classes. Remember, what we're talking about um, is it, it is it has to be half of um, half are going to be general education and half are going to be um, our, you know specialized courses. Now I just got a message from. Um, Greg and I want to. Oh, he's thanking uh, Denise for being part of the uh, seminar. So he's clearly not paying attention to this conversation, which is fine. <laughs> okay. Um, I just wasn't sure whether their question had appeared um, from our YouTube feeds. So let's go to the next one. It's really, really important to remember that you can't create a degree program by yourself. Okay. Um, it's not going to be possible to teach all the courses in a um, in a degree or in a specialty. So at a Plano, one thing that makes us revolutionary is the ability to recruit your own team, recruit your own dream team for your own department. I mean, you can do that right now. If you want to develop a, a program or a certificate in a particular piece in a particular area, um, recruit, identify and recruit the people who you want to work with. Um, and get them to go to aplerno.com and faculty. Now, uh, I want to just move for a second and talk about you know use Canvas and the Aplerno wiki to organize. Now, earlier today, we talked about um, I showed you guys the wiki, and right here it outlines uh, the basic expectations for um, the degree program. But let's say that you know I want to open it up and I want to create a um, specific degree program in uh, philosophy. Well, you become a member of the. You can do it one of two ways. One, and some people are already doing this. You you initiate a conversation on Canvas, which we'll um, I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but the other place is if you want to sort of initiate a conversation with the broader community, then. Um, a great piece is, you know, become a member and create a new page. Then we could call this HIL OSOP philosophy. Um, programs slash. Whoops, can't do that. Philosophy programs degrees. And you hit a tag. You've created a new page, and what you can do is you can start creating different pieces. Um, <coughs> again, links, um, files, videos, etc., and you can start to produce the basic outline of, of what you would like. So, um, whoop, skills. Identify the skills that you you want to teach. Classes. Team members. Okay. Um, prereqs. You know, all kinds of different pieces you can use the wiki to start to list them. And what we have also, let me just save that. Let's go back to certificate and degree development um, guidelines. We have right here on the bottom of the page the very basic um, proposal for your certificate or degree program, which is an introduction and description. Outlines a very basic justification for your program. Be a good idea to, to include potentially the size of your market. List the classes in the program. Now these can be classes that you want to create, um, but you can also list classes that are already offered at a Plano. Um, if you go through the course catalog on Enroll. Let's go here. Let 
and let's say I'm going to, oh, look at this. We already have kind of a, um, you know, a little mini courses open for development that could be a certificate program if I add another two. We've got um, uh, this person teaching introduction to online learning for students, but yet we've got this um, uh, crazy person, otherwise known as myself, teaching a class on using technology to subvert hierarchy in the classroom. And, and then we can go through and, um, you know, there may be a few other classes and we can say, okay, I'd like to propose this list of four classes to be a certificate in online learning and instruction. And propose that certificate and we'll take a look at it and, and we very well may be able to approve that within, you know, with a little extra work within a week or so. Um, again, we can approve that for students to enroll and to enter um, into uh, this certificate program. We can't grant the certificates, okay, until um, we've received that level of approval from the Board of Education in the state of Vermont, okay. And we'll talk a little bit about that later. So use the catalog. There are all kinds of courses here. Many of them could be bundled together um, for uh, um, different kinds of um, certificates. And you also might find that there are enough that can be bundled together for uh, um, potentially a degree. We haven't really done a whole lot of work with general education, but we'll talk about that on Thursday. Sorry, we'll talk about that on Wednesday and Thursday. But go through the catalog and, you know, the nice thing is you can click on the page. You can take the class, but you can also contact the instructor. So if a course isn't quite done or you want some help, hey, I'm developing this degree um, program. How, you know, hey, uh, Dr. Ash, could you um, help me with it? And, uh, you know, you can create your networks that way. So, you know, there's, there's a really neat catalog here that people are already starting to develop, and you can use that to start that certificate program. When you create certificate and degree programs, of course, um, it generates a lot more uh, both interest in your classes because the people will want to earn that certificate, but it also will help us in terms of marketing um, um, marketing the education to other to uh, to students as we ramp up our um, our student recruitment piece. Now here's what we're going to um, provide for our faculty and, and uh, as you develop, again, the program. Um, Aplerno supports you. We're marketing and we're going to market in partnership with our faculty. Um, we're not a traditional institution where we're going to be putting billboards on the sides of buses um, in a particular area and say, you know, come to Aplerno. Um, this is a global institution and so we're working on developing some tools that will allow faculty and allow us to um, use different social media, Google AdWords, a bunch of other things to um, contact interested parties in particular disciplines. But um, that's going to be work that both you and um, a planner are going to do together. Um, it's really important that if you're a faculty member, you have to kind of get out of the mindset that occurs in a lot of traditional institutions of higher ed that the institution is going to provide, a planner is going to provide you with students, okay? There may be a bit of that in terms of as, as we get larger and better known, but there's going to be a big um, part of this which is also um, hustling and getting the word out to the networks and the students who you already know who, who might like you and, and who want to take another class with you. Um, and we're, again, we're developing some, we're going to be developing and talking with you, you about the tools used to do that um, later on. We support uh, the faculty member in terms of, you know, we'll get them through the student admissions process, okay? Um, support in terms of making sure their tech works, getting them hooked up to Canvas, um, and advising, and, and we'll talk a little bit about advising later, but uh, we're, we're going to be setting up some pretty um, interesting and uh, innovative ways of of signing, of helping students navigate to either get their degree or to um, create their, uh, um, the second part of this, which is the skills portfolio, which will allow them to document what they know and what they can learn, sorry, what they know and what they can do, okay? Um, the Canvas in the Marketplace, uh, 
is a really critical part of that. We're providing the the, the place where you know students in the catalog where they can um, uh, where they can look at classes, look at the faculty, um, and look at all kinds of uh, data about their courses. So remember, it's really important if you're a faculty member to make sure that your instructor profile is set. This is a picture of me, um, <coughs> and you know we're going to be working on you know there's some things with the buttons, etc. But you know, here's a little uh, biography. But it's really important that you also, you know, in terms of the marketplace and getting the word out. Um, allow, uh, allow, allow, good old chain. That you create an academia.edu profile so that your students also have a chance, if it's appropriate. That they get a chance to that they are able to look at your writings and your scholarship and see oh you know oh this guy is teaching this tech class well, I can really see you know use of wikis and knowledge creation information exchange well let's you know let's read that and let's see whether the guy knows what he's talking about or or not oh I can download the CV take a look at what he what he's got and and, and what he's done you know, what's this article about take a look at the LinkedIn profile you know all of that type of um, information on our marketplace is going to make you you and your skills and your ability much more uh, uh, marketable and of an, of an interest to students. Uh, we think that in terms of uh, students' admissions and choices that they're going to make, that the more information we can deliver to students, whether it's through the marketplace or, con or connections and links to it, um, the better off the better off they're going to be in terms of finding the type of instructor that is going to both meet their educational needs but also the teaching style so um, you know we're, we're really excited about that and the skills portfolio you know we'll be talking about in the next um, in the next couple of days now for some things to remember as you're developing your you know developing the degree in the certificate class is admissions is open okay if a student's capable of doing the work, he or she can take the class or enter the program. Um, a Plano does not collect data on the age of its students. We do not collect data on, you know, sex, race, all that piece. Um, so if you can take a particular class, um, if, if you have the ability to take that class, contact the professor, and the professor is supposed to, you know, it's open. You're able to take that course. You're able to learn that material and add it to your um, your portfolio. You're able to learn that skill. A Plano has the final say in terms of the approval of all course certificate and degree offerings. Now, what I mean by final approval is, you know, we really believe strongly in, and we have a real big commitment to academic freedom, with one exception, and that is, you know, you can't advocate for genocide. Um, other than that. Um, you are for, you have um, academic freedom, but we have the approval in terms of uh, quality. If if your course may not be offered, you know we're going to look through the class and say, hey, you need to improve these particular things for it to be offered. But that's never going to be done in terms of a content area. Okay. Now number three, um, creating a degree is a um, you know, it's a lot of work, and there's a lot of different um, kinds of degrees that um, foundations and other grant-making institutions um, support in terms of development. So, unlike uh, most traditional universities, which take a huge cut um, in terms of uh, costs, if you get a grant or if you get a grant or you get funding to develop your program, it's 100% yours. Um, in other words, we're not going to we're not going to take that. Although, if we have a lot of time um, that we're spending in terms of um, modifying or changing the class, you know, we'd like to bill you for it. Um, but you know, we're probably not going to take. You know, we won't take any more than ten percent. So, you know, you think about a degree program you want to offer. You think about a certificate you want to offer. You've got a particular foundation that might be interested in funding your work. Um, if you can get the grant, it's 100% yours. One of the things that we're going to be working on over the next year is creating a mechanism in the not-for-profit world to um, 
act as a conduit for that money because many um, foundations can't accept, um, can't grant to uh, for-profit institutions, um, but they might be able to, we might be able to use the, a not-for-profit um, as a way to um, help faculty fund or develop um, different programs. So we're not, um, we're not, we're not interested in taking 40 percent, okay, the VIG, if you will. We're not interested in that. We're not interested in 30 percent. You know, if you've written the grant and you're going to create a program for a Plano um, and you're developing it, you know, we're going to, we're going to make sure that you get, you know, the, you know, and we'd like it to get, you know, at least, you know, nine, you know, 100% of the funding minus whatever our costs are, and we'll be very transparent with those costs. Um, another thing to remember is a Plano um, will seek NEASC and other um, memberships and accreditation. Uh, we're fully committed to, to being um, part of the system. Um, well, let me rephrase that. We're fully committed to meeting the standards of accreditation, regional and national, and and you know international accreditation. Um, the, we're, we take education very seriously, and we think the process of accreditation is is very very valuable, um, and uh, um, we're committed to that. So don't think that you know your degree is the degree program that you're going to going to develop. I mean. We're not the only people that get to that are deciding about particular things. You're going to have to, um, you know, if if you're offering an engineering degree, you're going to have to um, go through the accreditation process to make sure that that your your program, et cetera, meets the national, you know, engineering standards. Okay. So, um, another thing is once a letter of intent is submitted to the, um, a plano is sorry. Let me back up. Once the letter of intent become a degree granting institution is submitted. Um, a Plano has 18 months to get approved by the Board of Education in the state of Vermont. Um, we're, we've spent a lot of time working on our approval process now. Accreditation for degree granting authority is a different um, uh, piece of the, of the puzzle. Um, it's a really important piece for us and we're, I've had great conversations with um, the agency of education, and if our quality remains what it has been in terms of the submission of, mat of materials that we did for uh, the approval process, then we should be able to get degree granting authority. Um, the other piece to remember is faculty owns the IP. Any course you create, <coughs> you own. Um, degree programs that you create fully, whole, heart, we're going to have to get, you will own, you own all the intellectual content. Um, of your classes um, and potentially of the degrees. The only thing that we're going to have to start talking about um, is potentially some sort of reimbursement of cost sharing amongst faculty. Um, a Plano is, is interested only in getting, being billed for its time that it's spending on potentially, su you know, uh, supporting the initial stages of the development of, uh, of a degree program um, once it's up and running and successful. Um, and we're just interested in having as many students um, be able to take uh, classes as possible. So we're not going to be, um, you know, uh, the plan now is we're not going to be charging, you know, extra um, to faculty who are part of a degree program. We're, we're going to try to still, you know, we're going to stick with the, you know, the 90-10 rule, you know, 10% or $100 per student, whichever is greater. That's important to us. Okay, but faculty, you will always own the IP of the materials that you create. So there are some milestones in terms of being able to um, uh, do the certificate programs, okay, and do the degree program. So I want to talk with you guys a little bit about that. So students can be admitted into a certificate program once a Plano has submitted a letter of intent to the Agency of Education in the state of Vermont. We cannot grant the certificates until we have received um, degree or certificate granting authority, but students can be admitted to programs. Okay, so that could happen. You know, if we have, if we receive five good certificate and degree granting program, you know, degree granting proposals. Okay, 
then we'll submit the um, the letter of intent. Uh, we could do that as early as September of 2014. Now, the letter of intent um, is just that. Hey, we're going to we're going to be offering degrees um, and certificates. Uh, we want to start the process of of working with you all, of working with the um, the agency of education, the board of education in Vermont for that authority. Um, admissions to degree programs can happen once the general education classes are created and I'll talk a little bit about that um, later on um, and when a degree program is approved by a plano so faculty are recruited um, most of the classes are built and we've created the student support services so student support services created and we're um, you know we've got the mechanisms to deal with that right off the bat okay whoops um, so do I have any, let me go back to the questions. Dan and I are following, turn off your mail. Hold on. So I'm going to turn off the, there I am. Um, okay, do, are there any questions that anyone has? Let me just check. Not at the moment I received a message. Okay, so I've been, um, let me give it a, a couple more minutes, but I've been yammering along um, for about 40 minutes. But I hope that, uh, I hope that talk was, uh, was helpful. Remember that you can shoot us questions at questions at .com. You can also uh, shoot us, um, you can also tweet it to us at uh, backslash woodblock. And um, oh, I have a question right now. It's coming through. Um, what's the cost difference between a Plano degree and degrees at other institutions? Um, well, if you you can do a kind of a simple mathematical simple equation, we think that most of the classes are going to be between five hundred and fifteen hundred dollars per. Um, uh, per course. So in the case of um, an undergraduate, in, in, so in the case of a certificate program, you can see that a certificate might cost you $1,500 on up to, you know, to $3,000 and, and above, depending on who's teaching the class and what the cost is. Um, for a bachelor's degree, you know, it, it wouldn't be um, unreasonable uh, you know, to, uh, to think that a bachelor's degree would cost, um, you know, twenty thousand to forty thousand dollars, and uh, while that may seem quite a bit, uh, the interesting thing is that um, you're going to be really excited about our our discussion that we're going to have about transfer credits because there's a way to substantially bring down the cost of even more cost of a of a bachelor's degree depending upon the transfer credits and, and where you're getting those transfer credits from. Um, but I think it's not unreasonable to think that you'd be spending anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars per year, um, you know, if you're taking a full load. So again, that's um, uh, for a bachelor's degree twenty thousand or twenty to forty thousand, um, you know, depending. Okay, but we're not quite sure. All right, any more questions? I don't see any, so I think what I'm going to do is sign off. Uh, thank you very much for attending the talk. I hope this has been helpful. Please um, give us any feedback and uh, keep tuning into Woodblock and keep building those courses and, and um, give us your uh, degree proposals. Thank you very much.